Welcome to Lesson 7e, Incomplete Similarity. In this lesson, we'll discuss why we sometimes encounter incomplete similarity and how to design useful model prototype experiments when we have it. We'll show this through some example problems. First, a definition of incomplete similarity. It's when it's impossible or prohibitively expensive to match all the independent pi parameters between model and prototype. For example, you may have pi 1 as a function of two other pi's. You might be able to match one of them but not the other. So you cannot achieve complete similarity. Sometimes we can't even achieve complete similarity with pi 1 as a function of only one other pi. Here's an example of that type. Wind tunnel test of a model truck. Suppose we're testing a model truck in a wind tunnel. This one has the trailer instrumented with all kinds of sensors. Suppose the drag on the model truck is to be measured in a wind tunnel, so we could scale up to predict the drag on the prototype. The model is 1 20th scale, which is what this one is. That means it's 1 20th the size of the prototype. The real truck, the prototype, travels at 60 miles per hour, or 26.82 meters per second. Let's calculate the required speed of the wind tunnel and then comment about the feasibility accuracy of the test. We know from a previous lesson that CD is a function of Reynolds number for this kind of a problem. So we must match Reynolds number between the model and the prototype in order to achieve dynamic similarity or complete similarity. We write out the model Reynolds number and equate it to the prototype Reynolds number. Here we use air at the same pressure and temperature for the model and the prototype. This will make our analysis simpler since rho m and rho p are equal and mu m and mu p are equal. So our equation reduces to vm lm equal vp lp. So we must run the model at speed vm equal vp lp over lm. Note that I never gave the actual length, but we know that the model is 1 20th the size of the prototype. So vm is vp times 20. Plugging in vp, we get vm equal 536.4 meters per second. Hopefully you see that this is problematic. First of all, most wind tunnels don't go that fast. A bigger problem is that the speed of sound is 343 meters per second for air at standard temperatures. So this speed is supersonic. In fact, we can calculate the Mach number. Mach number is V over C. When we plug in V and C, we get a Mach number of 1.56 which is greater than 1, which is supersonic. If we ran the wind tunnel at this speed, we would have shock waves and other compressible flow problems. So clearly we cannot achieve complete similarity. By the way, if we add speed of sound to our list of independent variables and repeat the example problem from last time, dimensional analysis would yield that CD is a function of Reynolds number and Mach number, not just Reynolds number. It is difficult or impossible to match both Reynolds number and Mach number in the same test. So what do we do? I don't know. This lesson is making me nervous. Well, don't get too nervous, Ned. It turns out that Mach number is not important if it's less than about 0.3, where we say that the flow is nearly incompressible. It also turns out that CD, the drag coefficient, often becomes Reynolds number independent at high enough Reynolds number. So we can extrapolate. I'll show two common cases. Suppose we do some wind tunnel tests and we plot CD as a function of Reynolds number. And these are our data points. We usually have scatter at low Reynolds number. But then we see that the data tend to level off. If I draw a smooth curve through these data, we can extrapolate to higher Reynolds numbers. Let me expand my scale. Suppose this is the prototype Reynolds number, but this is the maximum model Reynolds number we can achieve. Since the data level off, we can extrapolate. This would be the predicted CD of the prototype. Of course, there's always some uncertainty when you extrapolate. We don't know if the data will start to go up or down. In a different test, you may have data that look like this, where we reach a minimum CD, and then the data appear to increase at some constant slope. If this is our max REM and this is our REP, we can extrapolate to this point and predict a CDP. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty because we don't know if the data will follow this same line when we extrapolate. As a second example of incomplete similarity, let's consider free surface effects. For example, when you're modeling a ship with a scale model. In this example, the drag on a model ship is to be measured in a water channel. By the way, 
A water tunnel is typically enclosed, whereas a water channel has a free surface. In this problem, we want to scale up and predict the drag on the prototype. Here the model is 1 to 100 scale, which means the model is 100th the size of the prototype. And the prototype ship travels at 20 knots, which is 10.29 meters per second. Let's calculate the required speed of the water channel and comment about the feasibility accuracy of the test. When we perform our dimensional analysis, we have to include the magnitude of gravitational acceleration as an independent variable because of the wave drag experienced on a boat. You can try this one for practice. Just add g to our list of independent variables in our example problem from the previous lesson, and you'll get that cd is a function of Reynolds number and Froude number, where Froude number is speed over the square root of gl. And we'll write Reynolds number as vl over nu, since kinematic viscosity nu is mu over rho. Let's try to match both of these independent pi's to achieve complete similarity. To match Reynolds number, we write vmlm over nu m equal vplp over nu p. And to match food number, we match vm over square root of glm to vp over square root of glp. Since g is the same in both cases, it's a fixed constant, unless we're doing the experiment on some other planet. Let's start with food number. We solve for vm. vm is vp times the square root of glm over glp. Since the g's cancel, we get vp square root of lm over lp. And since we have a 100th scale model, we get vp over 10. So to match Froude number, we have to set vm equal vp over 10. Well, that's certainly feasible with a model in a water channel. Here, vm would be 10.29 meter per second divided by 10, or about 1.03 meters per second, which is well within the range of water channels. Now let's match the Reynolds number from this equation up here. We know the ratio of lm and lp and the ratio of vm and vp. So the only way to match Reynolds number is to use an appropriate kinematic viscosity. Let's solve this equation for nu m, the model kinematic viscosity. We get nu m equal vm over vp, lm over lp, times nu p. Well, nu p is nu of the water, which is on the order of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. So plugging in our numbers, we set nu m equal 1 over 10, which is vm over vp, times 1 over 100, which is lm over lp, times nu of the water. In other words, we have to use a fluid that has a kinematic viscosity of 1 times 10 to the minus 9th meter squared per second. The problem is that no such fluid exists. No fluid has this small of a kinematic viscosity. So we cannot achieve dynamic similarity. What to do? I don't know. I think I'd just give up and go home. Well, don't give up, dud. It turns out, fortunately, Froude number is way more important than Reynolds number in flows with the free surface. So we match the Froude number and test at the highest possible Reynolds number and extrapolate. Again, we hope for a situation where at the correct Froude number, the data looks something like this, where this is the maximum achievable Reynolds number of the model. If this is the Reynolds number of the prototype, we must extrapolate CD of the prototype. As I said before, the problem is that we don't know for sure whether these data will follow a straight line. The data might actually go up or veer down or reach a constant CD at some point that may not be very close to this point. This is where experience comes in. Engineers who model ships in water channels know from experience how to extrapolate with reasonable accuracy. So incomplete similarity is not always a showstopper. It just makes our life more difficult. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.